Hi everyone, Amanda here. Hope you're well. Hope your uh, weather is treating you kindly and that you're getting lots of time to paint. Today, um, this is my vlog number ooh, 129 and this is all about my palette and what colours that I have in my palette and why I have them in my palette. And you know there's a huge range of colours and a huge range of brands and it's a very confusing thing where do you start and I get a lot of emails and questions from people um, you know what what colours should I have in my palette and I think that a good way to start you, you see a lot of people say or tutors say about having a cool and a warm of each primary and I think that's quite a good way to go um, and I guess in a way mine is a very very similar thing um, except that in my foundation palette I don't have opaque colors I use opaque colors for um, little exotics for later on um, and sometimes I wash them in because opaques are still transparent when you wash them in with water um, but I do prefer transparent colors for my foundation washes and my foundation palette. So I thought I will show you why I like these particular colors and how they work together and um, go from there. I do have a little bit of exciting news. I went to the art shop this morning and I bought some new colors. Oh, is it going to, oh, is it going to uh, focus? There we go. So, I've got Schminky Cobalt Turquoise, which is a little bit different, I think, from Winsor Newton Cobalt Turquoise. And I've got, I can't read it. <laughs> I've got Schminky Transparent Green Gold. I thought you'd like to know. Anyway. I will play with those later. It's a little bit naughty, I know. I shouldn't really do it. And, you know, often I say I don't go to art shop and buy more colours. Um, but the other thing that I do is I, um, to compensate for not buying colours, unnecessary colours that I'm not going to need, I buy earrings. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into some painting and um, I'll turn the camera around. See you in a minute. Hello everyone, Amanda here again. So this is my vlog number 129, which is a companion vlog to my paint box tip 129 which will be hopefully uploaded and, and emailed to you in the next few days. If you're not already subscribed to my weekly paint box tips, um, then you can do that on my website um, or you can um, also subscribe to my YouTube channel please and uh, you can like and subscribe and that will make a big difference to my channel and help me get more work out there um, anyway so this is about my palette this is about my workhorse palette this is not about any other special colors or anything exciting um, Oh well, it is exciting because you'll see the colours that you can make from this are totally incredible. Might just open that other shutter and get a bit more light in. Hopefully that will make a difference. It's not particularly bright light. And although there's quite a bit of sunshine coming through there, but it's just fairly ferocious at the moment. Summer, that's what happens. We moan about summer, we moan about winter. I know I do. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, so here's, uh, we've got everything. Can we see everything? No, not like that. Here we go. That's better. Right, okay. So, start at the beginning, end at the end. All of these colours are on my palette already because they're always there. And then um, when I'm actually painting, I pretty much stick to one set of primaries or the other unless I'm 
needing to change the temperature of something quite drastically and or I, I just make a mistake. I've noticed lately that in my plein air palette I have permanent alizarin crimson and burnt sienna next to each other and I keep dipping into the wrong thing and it's really annoying. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm just going to have to clean one of them out and put it somewhere else so I can see it's an obvious difference. I think the problem is the light is just so glary and bright at the moment that it's distorting my my vision of what I can see in the bright light. But anyway, that's that's what happens. Okay, so um, a typical palette, my first most often used palette would be, oh well let me go through the colours, Permanent Alizarin. This is Schminky Ruby Red which is akin to Winsor & Newton Permanent Rose. This is Raw Sienna and I know I said I like transparent. It's, it's a very beautiful goldy earthy yellow. It is totally amazing. And uh, Quinacridone Gold. And I have Indian Yellow here. Now it's in my palette but I don't actually use it a lot. It is one of my favourite yellows. These are my two favourite yellows, Raw Sienna Indian Yellow. Um, quinacridone gold for me is a mixing colour more than anything. Um, then I've got French Ultramarine, Windsor Blue Red Shade, Windsor Blue Green Shade and my fantabulous Burnt Sienna. So I've actually got two earth colours in um, this mix. Yeah. So um, typically, let's just tab them out and see how they look. Uh, start from the warm. You're not really going to see much of a mass tone today. I'm not putting out fresh paint. Let's just get rid of those for the second. And make sure I'm painting in the right place. French Ultramarine. And then a warm, cool blue. Just to confuse the issue. This is uh, Windsor Blue, which is a cool blue. But Windsor Blue Red Shade is a warm version of it. And you'll see in a moment why I say that. And this is Windsor Blue Green Shade. And you can see on my palette, I think, that this is a cooler colour compared to the Windsor Blue Red Shade. Here it is on my palette. Can you see the difference in those two? It's really important for you to see the difference and to understand the difference because with the same red, for example, you're not going to mix the same type of, of violets, yeah? And with the, um, the yellows, you're not going to mix the same kind of yellows, uh, greens, big to put in. So it's, it's knowing and understanding how these colours work together. So for today's argument, I'm just going to tab out with Alizarin Crimson. And then you can go and play and do your fun with. So this is how I mix my colour. I put colour next to each other. That's how I do it, yeah? Um, I also do quite a bit of charging as well. But this is my main tool that I play with. Because I just like seeing them blend together. There's alizarin with um, Windsor Blue. and with Windsor Blue Green Shade, yeah? Okay, so what colour yellow am I gonna use? You know, the funny thing is I realised when I was writing this, I don't actually use yellows a lot. I use Burnt Sienna as my yellow. More than anything, I use it as my yellow, as a mixer to neutralise and to do whatever I'm gonna do. So I think maybe I might just Shall I do that now? Okay, well, let's have a look at it and see what happens, yeah? See what happens. A little bit dry. Just might give it another little... It'll be too much water now, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to start at the bottom here and just tab it in and just see what happens. Um, 
and then I wish I'd done it in a different way for you, but never mind, that's what happens here. Yeah? I just love French ultramarine and burnt sienna. French ultramarine with it turning into a violet with alizarin crimson with burnt sienna is totally amazing. So, um, talking about that, so my favourite one actually is this middle one here, which is Windsor Blue Red Shade with Alizarin Crimson. So uh, let's just dive into that for a second and make a violet. Here's my violet. Oh, look at that. Scrummy doodle is a bit more of that. And then let's see if I can pick up some burnt sienna and throw that in. And this is an excellent way of making a lovely, rich, dark. Get the colours separating a little bit. Um, and I guess this is a reason to, um, I'm trying to look for reasons for you to not buy blacks or buy blacks but put them aside for now blacks and greys are a pointless exercise they're a waste of money they're a gimmick here and i know that's strong stuff but the reason i say that is because if you just put a black in your painting and it's just dull as dishwater look at the beautiful variety in this this is watercolor I'm not saying that black is not watercolour, I'm saying it's dull, I'm saying it's boring, I'm saying it's got soot in it because it's kiln fired, I'm saying it's boring. Let's zhuzh up our watercolours and get some colours mixing. Okay, so let's try the same thing with this blue, which is... Windsor Blue Green Shade. I'm not very good at doing two things at once. <laughs> wow, that is a stunner, isn't it? Look at that. And again, with my... Good Sienna. Oh, you know what I could do? Just to show you. Let's get that out of the way for a sec. Okay, one more and then I'll, I'll do what I was going to do. But I've got to do it quick. Whoopsie, not cut that one. I've got to do it quick because things might dry quite quickly. French ultramarine. Bit of, bit of, oh, wrong colour first, never mind. But this is how you make um, discoveries, is by making mistakes. It's, you know, it's the chief way of making mistakes. Uh, chief way of making discovery is making dis dis mistakes. That's how they made post-it notes. That's how the light bulb was invented. So you shouldn't be worried about making mistakes either. Okay. A little bit of a mixer rooney. And this is a real struggle without my specs on. It's better. Um, I happen to dig at my raw sienna. I'm just going to have to put some in. It, it dries out quite quickly so I only put a little bit in my palette but you can see I've pretty much got a golf ball again. I'm a little bit annoyed. Mr Windsor and Newton please do something about my raw sienna. <sighs> Hoo-ha! So this is why I use this palette, because I can make a gorgeous violet, I can make a gorgeous neutral, I can make a, um, I haven't showed you a green. Do I never paint green? But my water is always green. What is that about? I do not understand. Okay, right, let's have another crack at this. I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do um, this. Back to my French ultramarine. 
back to my alizarin and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go um, quinacridone gold so it'd be quite a dull a dull green and I know that because French ultramarine is a warm a warm blue yeah on the spectrum it is a warm blue so it's a blue that swings around obviously cool, blue is a cool color but it swings around to the red side of the color wheel so therefore it's warm blue and it appears to have a little bit of red mixed into it that's not the case but that's what it kind of looks like and then I'm adding in a third primary. So I've got three primaries, one, two, three, red, yellow, and blue. They're mixing to neutralize because if you've got three primaries, that's what you get is, is neutral colors. Okay, let's do another. Uh, this is the, oh, I'm painting right in the corner here. <laughs> painting myself into a corner. There's a lot of water here, so it's gonna mix in quite an exciting way. So um, a brighter a brighter green from, can I get a brighter green now that I've got a little bit of red mixed in there? That's, I don't know which one that was. That one. No, it wasn't, look. Haha, <laughs> I'm getting all mixed up. Look at that, the colors just blend by themselves. It's totally crazy. And um, I'd like to urge you to use this as your playtime to fool around with your colours and see what you come up with. So I'm pretty much tabbing this out how I paint here, which is a little bit of a disaster. But I think um, you, you can be neat and tidy if you want to, but I like to do a messy type of mix because then I can see all these gorgeous things happening in here. Where's my spritzer? Not much water left. I've sort of gone away from French Ultramarine for quite a while and I was a little bit annoyed at myself because I've got all these monster tubes of it at home and I thought, oh, flippin' heck, I really need to use this up. And it's a very beautiful colour, but I'm not that keen on... Um, I, I wouldn't use it in a sky. I don't like granulating in a sky. Um, and, you know, there is no reason why you can't mix and match. You can't have use all three blues, um, three or five different blues in a painting with a red and a yellow. There's no reason why you can't do that. You can do whatever you want. Make the colours work the way you want. Oh, I've just got to play. Excellent. Excellent. I'm trying to teach my grandson to do this. Excellent. <laughs> oh dear. I'm so looking forward to going back home to seeing all my peeps. But I want to stay. You know how it is. The really cool thing about these opaque colours, if you can get your timing right, the timing's not right now, yeah? because there's too much water floating around. You can see the little bubbles, yeah? There's a lot of water floating around. <gasps> Ooh. Just remember I've got this in my palette. I love this color. This is May Green. Mmm. Fairly fantabulous. I've got a lot of neutrals and darks going on here where I've let all the, the colours mix by themselves. 
So if I have a smaller brush, forgive me just a moment while I find something a little bit smaller. Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mix some blacks here. Mix some. Well, I shouldn't say black. I should just say I'm gonna mix some super darks. So uh, let's go French ultramarine. Now, when you're mixing super darks, I've got too much water here, so I might not achieve it that well. But it's just that everything is drying up so quickly. Just picking up as much, and I'm digging underneath. I shouldn't do that with this very expensive brush, but I'm doing it nonetheless. Oopsie. Oh, look at that. See how dark I can get it. It's just too much water, I think. But you can play with your own and have fun with your own. That one's not too bad, but it will dry quite a lot lighter, I think. Let's have a go with, I might just clean my palette out. Oopsie. You know why I'm not feeling so fresh as a daisy this morning? Because on my way back to my apartment here to do this, I stopped off at the art shop and I bought those lovely two colours, these ones. Let's play with them now. I stopped at the art shop, then I went to I went to that um, little, um, it's like a little bijou um, jewellery, fashion jewellery, and I stopped there and I was looking in the window, and as I was looking in the window, contemplating the gorgeousness things that I would get to go and see the Barbie movie next week, because we're all getting dressed up. Um, um, the owner of the store, the commissar, she <laughs> walked out to get a coffee and locked up the shop, and I was still hanging around outside. <laughs> So I went to the bank, then I uh, then I went to the art shop. I think I was actually on my way home, I think, and then I thought, oh, actually, this is not the right thing to do. I think I'll go down and get those two colours that I wanted for a specific project. And then I thought, I'll go to the toy store because I wanted to see if I could get a magnetic travel... <coughs> excuse me, chest set for Andre. And when I went in there, they had a Morse code light. So I bought that for Amy for the kids at school. And then I walked past the beautiful, one of the beautiful hat shops, and they had this beautiful Ventalia fan. I'll go and get it. This is what I'm using for Barbie. Hold on a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, get out. Oopsie, and here is my Ventalia for Barbie. Oops, I put top it in the paint. Cost me a fortune. And look at that, isn't it gorgeous? So it's got pink and it's got white and it's got orange, the three main colours that one requires for summer fashion because then I can wear pinky, uh, pink earrings or orange, pink lipstick or orange, excellent. I'm very happy with that. Right, enough of that nonsense. Isn't it beautiful? Comes with its own little case. Okay, I better get it out of the way before it gets splattered and anything. I'll get real cross. Okay, a little bit of this green gold while I'm fooling around. I don't want too much in my palette because look, I've already got a mess in my palette. Because I start off with a new palette. <laughs> uh, right, this one is going to be organized and it's going to stay organized and look at the state of it already. <gasps> Look at that colour. That is not what I expected. This is green. Uh, where did I just put it? 
Schwinky green gold, transparent green gold. Ooh. Okay, and this is, I wanted to see if this was very similar. My memory of this cobalt turquoise from Schminky is that it is quite different from the Winsor & Newton one. So I'm just going to pop a little bit there. Kind of looks a little bit warmer. Whoopsie, cooler, warmer, something. Can't get the lid on. Oh, they're almost identical. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Look at them together. Lovely. Lovely jubbly. Okay, right, back onto our thing. Taking up room now. Okay, so I'm going to mix a dark with Windsor Blue Red Shade Permanent Alizarin and Sienna. Okay, right, let's get stuck in. I'll just do it there, yeah. Okay, a little bit of viol uh, red to make it more violet. And then a bit of burnt sienna. Don't need a lot. Whoopsie, I'm struggling with room. Oh, look at that. Wow. What's the bit if I do more of that? Oh, look, a lovely, rich, dark, warm, dark. Excellent. Jeepers. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to use Windsor Blue Green Shade with a little bit of alizarin. That is just beautiful. Look at that. I just love these colours. I love them individually and I love mixing them. That's probably a little bit too neutral for me well look quite a green black so it's almost like what we need to do as students of watercolour is to learn to mix darks this is probably the best early exercise you could do with your colours is learn to mix darks with as little water as possible because everything springs off from that yeah and then I because I can make a no I can't <laughs> Just, I've done it for a long time that will be my excuse like a a grey scale yeah and it has kind of greyed down a little bit, yeah? There we go, that'll do it. Um, and mixing these darks, because once we learn to see how dark darks are, where's something black? Hold on, I've got nothing that's black for me. Yeah? Because often a lot of students, they'll go here, to this one here, and they think that's dark. And it has got dark values in it, but because it's got quite a lot of water in it, it's quite a light value. So it's important to learn how to see the darks, and it's a very difficult thing. I really admire um, oil painters. They just have this ability or this training to see the darks that, um, and in watercolors we see the lights, yeah? So we're the opposite end of the scale. We see the lights, and it's funny how people will gravitate either to watercolor or they'll gravitate to oil. Um, and from a value perspective, that the opposite ends. The oil painters see darks, watercolorists see light. And that's why it's hard for us to get darks because our eyes automatically go to light. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Um, 
So this is just very, very beautiful, of course, as the colours are. And look how these have mixed. Here. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So you can see, you can mix any colour. Uh, not that one, this one. A bit more water. I've got a lot of stuff on my palette, so I can just use that. Neutral. Gosh, you could play with this. Oh, look, you could turn this into people. Look. <laughs> Not doing a very good job of it. One tall person. A pointy brush. <laughs> it is fun, nonetheless. I don't know what made me buy it, but. The brush I'm talking about. Here we go, these are my little peoples. What's that thing we used to do with our fingers? With the, is that it? Here's the church, here's the steeple. Can't remember how to do it. Open the, where's the doors? Open the doors. <laughs> remember how to do it, these are all the people. some going in there. That's a little bit dry at the moment. A little bit of that and a little bit. Where's the colour? That one. <laughs> oh dear, get rid of you. <laughs> this is the chief solution for resolving um, an issue. Notice I didn't say a mistake, it's an issue. Yeah, big muscles, wash it out, get rid of it. And just leave it sit there, it doesn't matter. If you're desperate, you can do that. Excellent, look at that running of colour. Okay, so this is vlog number 129. Um, my palette and how I use my palette. And um, the companion paint box tip is number 129. Um, and if you are an email subscriber, that will be in your email very, very soon. And um, we will talk again shortly. Send me your questions and let's get you painting and let's get you enjoying watercolour even more. Have fun, everybody. Take care. Bye.